and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And boy, has it been an interesting week. And we're coming up to do some reviews. First off, I want to just clean house a little bit uh, on a couple of things that are happening in Fall River. One of the stories we talked about some time ago was EPA violations of the city of Fall River. Well, it's been announced that the EPA has yet to attach a fine and the city is still maintaining that this was just clerical errors. Um, the EPA uh, says that the risk management plan should have been completed in 2009, which is one of the reasons why they're being cited. Um, and the city, of course, went out and hired a company to do someone else's job. I wonder how much that's going to cost us on top of the, the fines that are going to be applied by the EPA. Um, and if many of you remember, we reported some time ago that Terry Sullivan stated to the city council that the EPA regulations are very complex and they're changing frequently, and he couldn't keep up with that. Well, you know, I and many other people say, Terry, if you can't keep up with it, retire. The city can't do any worse. Um, have you ever heard such an excuse, Chip? I mean... Well, uh, I can't keep up with the, I, I've I can't heard keep it up with the regulations. I've heard it quite often from Terry Sullivan, but, you know, the reality is, as uh, we stated on this show, and I've always stated, department heads are required to run the departments. That's just part of the, that's the way it goes. You're a department head, you have to run your department. That's like the police chief saying he can't keep up with new laws, and the fire chief saying he can't keep up with new fire codes. If you can't do that, you don't belong in the job. But of course, Terry Sullivan's still the same department head that got away with blowing a grant for the CSO, and his excuse was he was on vacation. So, I mean, when you, we have no accountability and no consequences for improper action, obviously, you're going to continue those actions. It, se it seems to be the regular, uh, you know, SOP for Fall River. Um, another thing that was announced uh, today is that Fall River is part of a federal pilot program aim at boosting economic development. <laughs> this is a program straight from the White House now, and it gives them access to unlimited resources on how to develop uh, economic development plans, uh, improve uh, poorly uh, performing schools. Uh, and it's funny, I mean, you know, from unemployment to underperforming schools to developing the life sciences industry in the city, Flanagan said the city will have the resources the White House can offer. Um, it's not the resources that the White House can offer. It's the resources that the city uses. And the problem is nobody uses them. And when that story came out, I, I, I had to laugh because I started reading some of the comments. And that's exactly what the people said. It's wonderful to have the resources, but use them. Somebody use them. Somebody out there, please use them. Put them to good use. <laughs> well, you know, the, the reality is it's, it's, it's just another, another one in a litany and a long line of programs uh, that the federal government comes out with to address problems that never, ever get fixed. How many programs have we had to address these issues? How many problems have we had to deal with the drug issues? You know, it just doesn't work. The fact is, I don't care what kind of plan it is, it's, it's, it's an absolute, it's absolutely ridiculous to think that we can develop an economy in Fall River when people have no money. I keep saying that. Why doesn't anybody figure that out? The reason that we had a depression was that people didn't have any money to spend. The reason we recovered from a depression was after the Second World War, Nobody could buy consumer goods during the war, and they all had money because everybody was employed. And the fact is that if we looked at our Newton and say that Newton's income is almost four times Fall Rivers, and they have 14,000 businesses in Newton, which is approximately the same size as Fall River, yet Fall River has only 4,000, why? How can you open a business in a place where nobody has any money to buy your products? But we have a federal program down here to tell us how we can get, we can fix this. Maybe the federal government's going to let us buy money with soda cans. Hey, there's an idea, right? Uh, and it's, you know, I, I met with clients yesterday who are trying to improve their businesses. Um, they've been a longstanding business in Fall River, this particular uh, company. And they're trying to develop their business more to, to bring in more customers and the problem is like I said the problem is people come in and they can't afford to pay for what we have so what do you do um, 
I, you know, but now that you brought up the drug industry in this uh, discussion, <laughs> <laughs> we'll segue. Now. We'll segue now into drugs. Another program um, of probably wasted money. Um, I recently received several complaints from participants and clients of the STAR program. Um, for those of you who don't know what STAR is, STAR is the Stanley Street Treatment and Resources Center, which is obviously on Stanley Street. Um, they're a detox center, they run outpatient programs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I received several complaints from them, and you know, we're not just limited to government here. If you've got other things, let us know. Um, but Stanley Street announced that it's receiving more than $400,000 uh, $400, under a state grant. And guess what this $400,000 is going to do, according to what Nancy Paul, the CEO and executive director of STAR says, this grant is to keep people out of jail. It's kind of like a court diversion program. So you go, you get arrested, you go to court because you have drug possessions or whatever. And she's going to hire with this money two people who will work in the courthouse to look through the cases to decide if somebody's eligible for this type of program. Because if they go to jail, as she stated, they don't get treatment, they come back out, they're, they're drug abusers again. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in Stanley Street at this point. Um, because I'm receiving complaints from clients that currently are part of their uh, new program uh, saying that they're, that they're canceling group meetings for them, they're uh, shifting uh, counseling sessions and, and, and paperwork isn't being filed on time. So I have to say, what's going on over there? Because that program is operated with grant money. <laughs> it's, it's lovely how everybody operates with a grant, don't you think? Well, that's, that's the federal uh, government's way of appeasing people. They throw grants at problems, and they, they come up with these things. And we know that drugs are an insidious problem, and, and it, they're very difficult to deal with. But we look historically on how much success we've had, and it's virtually none. All these programs don't really uh, hit it. The fact is that the, the, you know, these, these people who are addicted to drugs have, have an extremely difficult time it's an individual kind of thing. If they want to, if if they want to beat it, even if with with all the intentions, we find that the the ability to to stay off it is difficult. It's a serious social problem, but the answer is not just throwing more and more money at it because it seems that we get you know we try a program, it doesn't work, and then we rather than trying to f focus on some program somewhere that's worked and has a has a, has a good degree of success, and try that throughout the country, we don't. We just go from one program to another program. They all fail and they appropriate more money and, and the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It always is. It always is. And that's, that's the sad part about it. Um, we are starting a full investigation into Stanley Street Treatment and Resources and we will be speaking to their clients, their clinicians, and their administration to find out what exactly is going on over there that appointments can't be kept. I've already heard excuses from some people as part of Stanley Street that they don't have the staff. They've got all this money, but they don't have the staff. Um, and, you know, this grant that uh, Star recently got was because before Nancy Paul went on Christmas vacation, she filed for it. Maybe she should give lessons on filing for grants to Terry Sullivan. <laughs> She did it before she went on vacation. She did it wow. before she went on Isn't vacation. Isn't that a unique approach? Uh, I think so. I think so. Do it, your it, job before you leave for vacation. I Make know. Sure. Isn't that... Really important things are done. That's a, that's, a, that's a really unique approach. That's an unheard of approach for the city of Fall River. Yes, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> well, now we come to, out to the big information which has been recently made public. Uh, and we spoke about it several times before this happened. And that is pay as you throw. And for those of you who don't know what pay as you throw means, it means that every one of you in Fall River are going to have to go and buy bags, which are color-coded and you probably say City of Fall River on them, and they're cutesy and small and everything else. Um, and you're going to have to pay to throw away your trash. And Kathy Ann Viveris uh, can be quoted here because she said that there will be three size bags. There will be the $2 bag, the dollar and a quarter bag, and the 75 cent bag. <laughs> I sound like I'm dealing drugs here. I really do, you know. <laughs> and 
she she's stating that the 75 cent bag will be good for single people and elders because they don't have a lot of trash um but i wonder what the difference is between the dollar and a quarter and the two dollar bag i mean uh, the average family will probably spend between eight and ten dollars a week in trash if they don't recycle the heck out of everything um and i have it now confirmed by several people um, and including Kathy Ann Viveris' own statements that if the pay as you throw program does not get approved by the city council, the administration will lay off teachers, firefighters, and police. How come in Fall River we always do things with threats? We threaten everything. And we don't threaten, you know, nobody was threatened over as secretaries, nobody was threatened over, you know, as political patronage jobs <laughs> nobody was threatened but the police the fire and the, the teachers were threatened um i have a problem with this I, I i mean chip isn't this always the way we do business in fall river well i've had a problem with it for decades because mm -hmm. in every community it's overridden two and a half and anytime there's a problem in a city they lay off fire police and, and go into education ultimately that's because people feel these are necessities. They're essential services, as, if we, as we have said time and time again. Uh, so they, they care about this, and it's, gonna, it's going to coerce them into, into thinking about passing something they shouldn't. Because as you said, if he said, well, I'm gonna eliminate, I'm gonna eliminate all my patronage jobs, all the assistance, all the extra pay raises I gave unqualified people, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to lay off Mr. Long and his assistant, uh, this job that he created during his, the two new supervisors in DPW, nobody will care. They'll say, go ahead, lay them off, because actually, you know, it's a lot of fat in government. Let's do it. And they're going to say, great, and we'll have a leaner budget. But no, you know, uh, this is another hidden tax, pay as you throw, that is going to be piled upon an increase, a maximum increase within two and a half on your property taxes water rates and the cuts in health care that are being shifted over to the employees so I mean you know we we had 37 percent of the people that own property in this city we're, we're bucking for 15 I think because anybody that has a walker and can afford to get out of this town is going to get out of this town because we have nothing but this government I have never seen an administration like this they have a total disregard for even making the, even even a simple political move to make it look like they care about patronage being known by the public. They just don't care. He's created all these jobs. He's putting in a budget now because he overspent and mismanaged the city. Somebody lied about last year's about this year's budget because obviously they said it was sustainable. So what is the direct result of his incompetence, his malfeasance, his mismanaging, and misappropriation of funds for a year? The taxpayers get hit with a tax raise. They get in to pay as you throw. And if we don't, our safety is going to be jeopardized. The education of our children, it is, it is unconscionable. I have never seen, I mean, I, I remember when mayors actually worried about raising taxes. And this guy just, uh, the, he seems to be oblivious. Well, you know, phone calls were made to the mayor's office um, over the past couple of days. Uh, some by several Facebook people who follow the show. Um, and I made one myself. And I deliberately made sure that my phone number did not appear as me. Um, and I asked, as did several other people uh, who follow the show, and they gave me confirmations. Um, I, I didn't ask, I stated, I am not in support of the pay-as-you-throw program, and I want the mayor to know that so he does not move forward with it. And I was told that the mayor is not proposing the pay-as-you-throw program. This is up to the city council, and it has not been approved yet. You need to call your city councilors and let them know that you're against pay-as-you-throw. I have a problem with that, a big problem. The city council does not propose the city council disposes. The mayor proposes. And the mayor proposed it so much that it's already written into the proposed budget that is going to be submitted to the city council at the end of next week. 
So explain to me why the mayor's office is telling people to call the city councilors because the mayor has nothing to do with it. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little bit more than amazing. It's actually, uh, it, you know, it, it speaks that maybe somebody needs an evaluation <laughs> on their ability <laughs> to make a logical decision. I agree. Uh, because I don't understand how you can deny uh, having anything to do with the pay as you throw when you put the pay as you throw in your budget. As, as you said, CJ, the fact is that the mayor, the mayor proposes and the city council disposes. The fact is that the city council are the people who vote for the funding and vote for the budget, but the mayor put together the budget. And if you put, pay as you throw didn't appear from a bottle, nobody rubbed the genie's bottle and pay as you throw appeared, the mayor is gonna deny accountability for hat well who put it in does kathy ann put it in well she works for the mayor you know as harry truman once said the buck stops here he is the ceo of the city and everything in that budget was proposed by him and everything we don't like that's in that budget which is about 98.9 <laughs> percent of the budget uh, all the patronage positions all the funding for the for the jobs that are do nothing jobs he proposed if there are cuts it's going to be his fault the blame lays squarely on the shoulders of the man who put together the budget. You know, and, and it's interesting because, you know, we had spoken briefly that um, there was rumors and discussion about the mayor speaking to DCM and tell, or DPW, as many people know it. And I don't know why we changed it to DCM, but that's another story. Um, talked to the employees down at DCM and said, I'm not going to privatize. Uh, but you need to go to the city council in your orange shirts and let them know that you support my budget. Um, and the pay as you throw was in there at that time. Um, now, he didn't say he would fire them or privatize them, but he did make it clear that if his budget isn't approved, he would have to lay people off. He would have to make changes. Now, from what you had said on our previous show and from, of course, my own research, I find that that could be construed as a violation of Chapter 150E. And I know he didn't come right out and say, go there and do this, but they're going to show up at the city council meeting in their orange shirts and say, you know, support the DCM. Um, and we've seen departments, the fire department has done it, the police department has done it, the teachers have done it. People do this all the time. We're not saying you can't, you know, voice your opinion and, and make a stand for yourselves. But how can you say that you're not being coerced or being forced? You know? Well, it, yeah, the, it, it's, a, it's a fine line, as you said in the other show. But the fact is that when you see any department go down there with signs it's normally because they've negotiated a collective bargaining agreement and, and the city council is funding that ag that agreement and they have every right to go down there and say look support us because even if you agree to a contract as we say the mayor proposes city council disposes even though a collective bargaining agreement is agreed upon between the, the uh, a union and the city the city council still has to fund it if they if they don't fund it the contract is null and void and they have to go back into negotiations and there's a process in the, of arbitration and there are a whole, a whole bunch of uh, a myriad of, of things. But the fact is when a condition of employment is that you have to take a political position in order to keep your job, that is coercion and that's prohibited by the law. You can't say you'll only get a pay raise if you support this political budget or this political position because it's 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 not legal to do that you know the mayor can say hey you don't approve the budget i'm laying people off and that is you know that's his prerogative as the ceo but he's also going to have to deal with the political fallout of laying off police and fire while he keeps patronage jobs on but when you say I'm going, to, I'm going to lay people off, but then you tell those people you're going to lay off that if you don't support my position, that's where we get into the coercion. Right, and it's just very interesting to see. I mean, I, I support DCM. They do a great job. I mean, I wouldn't want to get out there in the middle of winter with wind blowing, snow coming down, ice, and, and picking up trash or anything else. But at the same time, I don't want to feel people are being forced to do something to keep their job or 
get the benefits that they need. I, don't, I just don't believe in that. And it's just been really interesting because that bit of information was leaked out to other people throughout the city, um, not from this show, by the way, and a group of people started to get together, and on Tuesday, they're going to show up at City Hall to oppose the pay-as-you-throw program, and they want you to show up. If you can't afford pay-as-you-throw, they want you to show up. They want you to show up and say, no, we're not going to pay that. We're already taxed to death. We're not going to pay it. We don't want it. And they have some very good reasons for not wanting pay-as-you-throw. And they called me up and they asked me, and they've actually Facebooked me, and they're like, can we get arrested for bringing bags of trash into City Hall and leaving it there? And I said, that you can probably get arrested for. I said, but if you leave it on the steps, they'll hit you with littering or illegal dumping. I said, you know, that's probably what they'll get you for. But a couple of years ago, a gentleman showed up there and dropped all the bags off at City Hall and left. And um, that's what we're going to see if we go to pay as you throw. We will. Um, people just aren't going to pay to throw away the trash. They're just going to take it and they're going to drive by, by an empty lot and they're going to throw the bag there. Uh, they're going to dump it over at all the commercial dumpsters they can find. Um, you're just going to see people not care. Um, and Kathy Ann said, we're going to try to make the tenants responsible for their actions. So if they don't use uh, pay as you throw bags, um, we're going to send them a letter and we're going to find them. So now DCM is now also going to be the trash police. We're going to add another job to them. Um, because they're going to go open up that bag, obviously, and go through it and see if they can find a piece of mail or, or something which identifies where it came from. But if they can't do that, who's going to get the fine? The property owner. And just for property owners out there so they know, a first time civil offense at Fall River is $100. A second time is 250 a third and subsequent of $500 a piece. So think about every time the trash goes out and a tenant in one of your properties doesn't properly put it in a page of throw bag, 100, 250, 500, 500, it's gonna add up pretty fast. So think about that when you're doing this. Well, there'll be a lot of evictions because these people are gonna get, you know, the, if the landlord gets fined, he's gonna evict them and then we're gonna have another issue. We're gonna have evictions and, and right. people, and it's ridiculous. And to get back to the DPW employees, I have nothing but respect for the job they do. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Kenny Pichico at the last city council meeting in, and uh, I told him that, you know, a lot of people don't realize they're out there like the postman in rain, shine, sleet, or snow, picking up barrels in the winter and the heat of the summer. And, you know, and they work hard. They work hard. And it, it is, to me, it's, it's uh, despicable that they would be put in a position where they have to make impose another burden on the taxpayers to subsidize their own position when we pay taxes. When we're looking at a budget that was totally mismanaged and we're in this position not because of DPW, not because of the fire and police departments, we're in it because of absolute mismanagement and at a, at a, a meeting on health care, at a PEC meeting, the question was, we talked about an audit of the health care system to find out where the city's missing money is on their side of the 75-25 of the split. And when Kathy Ann Viveris was asked specifically, don't you want to have a forensic audit so you can find out where your money is? The answer to that question was no. Now, I don't know how anybody could say, I don't want to find money. 18 million, 14 million, 12 million. Ah, the hell with it. Just forget about it. I don't want to find it. The reason the answer was no is they know full well where that money went. It was misspent. It was misappropriated. And someone might walk out of, out of government center in handcuffs if they do a forensic audit. And that's one of the reasons. And that's what is really, really getting the people fired up. And, you know, maybe the only thing we can do is throw them all out of office. Well, uh, again, it's we're, what we need to do now as citizens, and everyone that's watching this show needs to do now as a citizen, you need to show up at Tuesday's meeting of the city council. You need to voice your opinion as pay as you throw, and don't believe the rhetoric. Do not for a moment believe the rhetoric that we're going to fire police, we're going to fire firefighters, we're going to fire teachers. Don't believe the rhetoric. The problem is, is that pay as you throw was depended on in the budget from the man who turned around and said, I am not going to support pay as you throw. This man can't tell the truth in every other statement because every other statement's a different number. 
and his city administrator is doing the same thing. We get one number at the city council meeting, one at a budget meeting, one, I mean, one to the press. How can we believe what we're being told when I don't think they know what they're telling people? I don't think they believe what they're saying <laughs> because they can't keep their lies straight. I mean, if Mayor Flanagan and Kathy Ann Viveris had a Pinocchio nose, I could hang clothes from here to California. I'm telling you now. It's, it's, it's sad. It truly is sad, Chip. I mean, oh, yeah. what I, are we going to do? They, I think they've got to get rid of their calculators and they've got to use an abacus because at one of the last meetings, uh, Kathy Ann made a statement that uh, on a health care that every 1% um, increase was a million dollars. And last time I checked, I didn't need, need a calculator to know that uh, uh, 1% of a $50 million dollar account is not a million dollars and yeah. that's not even and what they that's the total budget that's not considering our 25 percent out so their, their their figures are always flawed i mean they you know they use high figures when they want to to cry about their liabilities but they use low figures when when they're, they're talking about their assets you know, it's an old game, but it's been taken to a whole new level by this administration. And just the, the, the total mismanagement, the question has to be asked, you know, does anybody in our, on our financial team have the ability to count? <laughs> um, I don't have that information for you right now, Chip, but I'll, I'll, I'll research it and I'll get back to you on it. <laughs> I, yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard that one before, haven't we? And it seems that that's the that's the patent answer. And you know, but as we we keep saying, you know, we we're laughing here because we have to laugh to stop from crying, because the people that are being victimized are the people that's in the city of Fall River. This is true. And you know what? You know what I really think they should start doing is dumping some antidepressants into the the, the city water supply because what's happening. And that building built over a highway, um, I think it, you know, as the traffic goes by, they get a downdraft and all the intelligence goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, earlier you talked about Star, and I guess with that grant, they're sending out mailings. So I've never in my life got a, got a mailing from Star, but I got one in the mail. It's just, just why I got it, I don't know. It, it's just a resident. Yeah. And, and it was like, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to go to stock as I'm so depressed at what's <laughs> happening in the city. I don't know what's going on here because it's, it's just, it's. We live in Bizarro World. We should, we should change the name of this community to Bizarro World. It, it would fit. It really would fit. And that's, and that's the scary part about it. Well, I want to thank you for watching. Keep watching. Keep those tips coming in. You can reach us uh, on our tip line or you can send mail, email to tips at scstonline.com and we're always here to get your news and your questions answered thanks for watching and by the way have a great memorial day weekend and go to the council meeting on tuesday please come and voice your opinion <laughs>